Hello, we are Cecilia, Maria, Tariq, Tim, Uxue, and Maria Victoria, and we will present our project on sustainable transport and the rethinking of the UN SDGs in the post pandemic era. On the previous exercise, we have worked on sustainable transport and tourism related to bicing. So now we will mainly focus on the SDG goal that is related to sustainable transport and we will also connect it to Barcelona. So in order to do this, first we will briefly introduce the topic, then the SDGs and targets of our topic, the impact of the COVID, the progress made, and we will give some international examples. And finally, we will reflect on the rethinking of the goal. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development was launched in 2015 by all the UN member states, and it was launched as a universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet, improve the lives and prospects of everyone, and set the world on a path of peace. 17 development goals were adopted in order to transform the financial, economic, and political systems that govern our societies today to guarantee the human rights of all. And regarding Barcelona specifically, the city has decided to make a clear commitment to the 2030 Agenda. The Municipal Council approved the report on implementing the, to the 2030 SDGs in Barcelona, so they have interpreted the agenda and adapted it to the local context, and they linked all their activities to accomplish these goals. So the SDG that is related to our topic is the goal 11, which is sustainable cities and communities. And we will work specifically with the targets 11.2 and 11.6 that are the ones that we can see here on the slide, because these ones are the ones related um, with the sustainable transport. So the goal 11 is essential in the agenda because cities have a fundamental role in the development model. And why is this? It is because 50% of the population lives in cities. So this makes the cities responsible for the 70% of the world's energy consumption and for the 70% of global carbon emission, carbon dioxide emissions. And cities are also the place where there is more inequality, more extreme poverty, unemployment, and the least sustainable behavior. You can find it there in cities. However, on the other hand, the silver lining is that cities can be the space for innovation, wealth generation, and for the creation of opportunities. So this is why local policies are important as they are the ones who can promote and guide the change. And as mentioned before, Barcelona is a good example as they have been committed for some time to a model that puts sustainable development at the center of the municipal policy. And because now they have also incorporated that uh, 2030 agenda. Okay, so now I will talk about the COVID impact on SDGs. So it's really necessary to recall the current context due to the worldwide pandemic of COVID-19. The effects of the crisis are multiple and come in various forms. And it is undeniable to say that the COVID has contributed to the slowdown of the world economy and the factor has delayed the progress of countries in the field of transport. Our SDG 11 focuses on sustainable cities and communities. Furthermore, we feel the impact of more targets being compromised. For example, the target 11.1, uh, where this goal will not be achieved as the vulnerability of the population has clearly increased as well as their precariousness. And uh, on the other hand, the impact of the COVID has accelerated certain objectives, such as the target that focus, focuses on clearer skies. That's the target 11.6 that you can see on the slide. And uh, nevertheless, this effect due to the successive lockdown may have provided a short-term solution in a long-term context, um, and uh, from which certain challenges arise such as the relaxation of the environmental laws and, and standards to stimulate economic growth. So uh, thus, the impact of COVID-19 on, on the SDGs certainly leads to the redefinition. Just to finish on the impact of COVID, this graph shows this impact on Barcelona according to the mode of transport. What about the progress made? 
we can see that increasing urbanization, especially in developing countries, generates many problems such as more slums, more complicated waste management, and uh, also more pollution. Often, the transport systems are also insufficient. So, goal 11 of the SDGs attempts to respond to these challenges. This goal has, since its implementation, experienced mixed progress. Indeed, we understand from the UN document that progress has been made, but that uh, very much remains to be done, as, the, for instance, the percentage of the population living in slum has been reduced, but there are more people living in this place than before in a total. Furthermore, the proportion of urban residents who have convenient access to public transport, which is defined as living within 500 meters walking distance of a bus stop, and within one kilometer of a railway, railway or a ferry terminal, remains low, particularly in developing countries like uh, the sub-Saharan ones, uh, for instance. Uh, as shown in data collecting collected in 2019, only half of the world's urban population had convenient access to public transport. Hence, this challenge remains important, as public transport accessible for all is one of the key elements for the growing urbanization and therefore for the, this SDG. Also, most cities have struggled to ensure that their population have convenient access to open public space Additionally, most cities still do not meet the air quality criteria as defined by the World Health Organization. So pollution is still a big problem, even, and, uh, even though the pandemic has had a benefit effect on it, a brief benefit effect. So in some goal 11, the indicators used to evaluate the progress of the goal are in some making little progress. However, progress is being made in the implementation of national urban policies, which uh, the United Nations consider fundamental for uh, the success of uh, this goal. Indeed, between 2015 and 2020, there has been an increase in the number of countries with such policies in place. Bobo? In this case, in the international example, we use the example of Brussels in Belgium. In Brussels, there are plenty of bicycle rental shops and paths. Bikes can be borrowed from an automatic parking or from a rental company. Bicycles can either be rented hourly or daily. In Brussels, the use of bicycles is one of the safest methods of transportation, apart from it being efficient, a pleasant way to travel around the city, and a choice that people prefer instead of using a taxi or the subway. In general, the city of Brussels is a good example when it comes to the use of bicycles. In the center of the city, bikes are often faster than cars. The city has bicycle racks and boxes, rental systems, special routes, and even the bike committee, which really creates a space for discussions related to sustainability, transportation, and bicycles in general. In order to encourage locals to use their own bicycles and to use them to move around the city, Brussels has bicycle boxes almost everywhere on its territory. A bicycle box is a box with key axes that can accommodate five bikes, five bikes at a time from local residents. The number of such boxes has been growing a lot during the past few years, and the residents of Brussels found the idea very practical and appealing. The rent for a bicycle parking spot costs around 60 euros per year. Therefore, most people can afford it easily and make sure that their bicycles won't be stolen. The goal of the cyclo parking plan is to have such boxes absolutely everywhere in order for everyone to be able to access them in a range of 150 meters away from their houses. <clears throat> in relation to targets two and six of the sustainable development goal number 11, making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable, we can clearly see that Brussels is working hard and making changes by implementing and providing resources to the residents in order to achieve these targets of the SDG number 11. By having reliable, accessible and affordable methods of public transportation that reduce pollution and traffic, as well as it promotes productivity and inclusion. So now we are going to talk about the SDGs in the post-pandemic era. Uh, we could see that um, even before the COVID-19 pandemic, progress remained un uneven and we were not on track to meet the goals by um, 2030. 
um, some gains were visible at, and um, at the same time an overall perception is that um, change was still not happening um, at the speed or scale required or uh, wanted. Now, due to COVID-19, an unprecedented um, health, economic and social crisis is um, threatening lives and livelihoods, uh, making the achievement of goals even more challenging. Um, almost all the countries faced an intense um, crisis and health systems in many countries have, have been driven um, to the brink of collapse. The livelihood of half um, the global workforce has been severely affected. Uh, moreover, more than uh, 1.6 billion students are out of school and tens of millions of people are being pushed back into extreme poverty. Um, so we, we do believe that the world is not on track anymore to achieve the global goals by 2030. Um, before the COVID-19 outbreak, progress um, had been very uneven and more focused attention was needed in most of the areas. The pandemic um, disrupted implementation towards uh, many of the SDGs and in some cases turned back decades of progress. The crisis has touched all segments of the population, all sectors um, of the economy and all areas, um, all areas of um, the world. Not surprisingly, it is affecting the world's poorest and most uh, vulnerable people. Um, it affects them the most. Um, it has exposed harsh and profound inequalities in our societies and um, is further um, exacerbating uh, existing disparities within and among countries. Um, speaking about um, our SDG 11, which is sustainable cities and um, communities, it is worth saying that the impacts of COVID-19 are also increasing the vulnerability of the world's uh, 1 billion slum dwellers who already suffer from inadequate housing with limited or no access to um, basic infrastructure and services. At the same time, the number of residents who have um, convenient access to a public transport remain low, especially in some regions, and this situation would be uh, most likely not possible to seriously improve uh, by the established deadline. SDG 11 and its targets definitely will be impossible to achieve by 2030, as well as many other goals and targets. Um, on the other side, uh, we can see some positive impacts of the pandemic on the sustainable cities and communities goal and um, its targets. During the pandemic and remote work and lockdowns in particular, we could uh, witness in many cities, um, for example, decrease in transport use and pollution and um, cleaner air. Uh, we could also see an appeared sense of community or maybe a deepened sense of community in many neighborhoods, um, many communities, many cities. Moreover, use of um, bicycles increased during the pandemic and um, all these um, positive aspects should be kept in mind and uh, we think that we should make an effort um, to support these positive changes so that they become a trend and not just a brief uh, moment. Uh, we also want to notice that during the pandemic, the world and lives of people changed dramatically in all the spheres, and therefore there is a need to also reconsider all the SDGs. Um, there is maybe a need to organize a special post-COVID conference and to discuss the current situation, the impacts of the crisis, um, new um, or modified goals, and maybe even establish new deadlines and indicators. COVID-19 can be seen as a good moment to realize and recognize that we that the way we were moving was leading us to more or less nowhere. And there is a huge need for change. We uh, really need um, to collaborate and unite all our efforts in order to build a better world. Um, thank you for your attention.